Hey, what's going on, you guys? So we're back. Um, we're working on our first fully built engine for this car. <laughs> I've already explained to you guys that this is a bone stock D15 B2. Um, we really don't know jack about this engine. We don't know anything at all. We have never even started it up. So um, yeah, obviously <laughs> she's not gonna last very long with that kind of nonsense, but we've already been working on that. Um, this is a JDM D15 B block. It is actually a very rare block. It is an 88 to 91 spec, meaning it still has the dipstick coming out of the crankcase in the center, just like a normal EF engine. And um, it's pretty much D15 B1, B2 spec. If you guys don't know, most D15 Bs, most JDM D15 Bs are really more like D-stroked D16s. They have the bigger crank, the bigger crank bearings, and they have a much different piston rod design. It's funny because the JDM D15 B rod, um, where was that? This here is a rod and piston, a P2C piston from a OBD2 JDM D15B. And um, if you compare it to our OBD0 D15B, you already see that our R D15B, our OBD0 D15B actually has a shorter rod and a taller piston than our OBD2 D15B. And yeah, that's just some knowledge for y'all. I've been like figuring all that stuff out all day today just you know putting together a list of parts that we need for this engine but yeah it looks like we pretty much have everything um right now isa is measuring for roundness and basically just um trying to figure out if we need to send this block in for boring or not we're more than likely just going to hone it and full send it and we are going to be running max speeding rods in this setup so these are d15 b2 b7 rods um, if you guys have ever looked for D15 B2 B7 stuff um, on eBay just to fully build your engines, you're going to realize that um, you really don't have any options. We basically, we have one option for pistons, and that are basically our same PM7 or PM3 pistons. We're basically just going to order a brand new set of these from Nippon Racing, and they are going to be um, floating pistons. These are not floating pistons. There is a difference. Like you cannot take um, those rods and slap stock pistons onto them. They actually use a different type of wrist pin. We'll talk about that stuff later when we actually have the pistons in front of us. But for the most part, I kind of just wanted to show y'all that we took apart that D15 and like, sheesh, she looks really good. Like all of the bearings came out looking like that. They all look just really good, at all, like really good in every way. There's really no, room for concern here um the actual rod bearings themselves they have a little bit more wear than any of the other bearings but you know that's kind of normal this one has a little bit of pitting but i was also hitting one of them with a hammer on the bearing side because it wouldn't come out so i'm gonna hope it was that one i'm not worried about it at all because we're not using any of this stuff all this stuff is going to be thrown away basically we're just going to be using the girdle we're gonna have brand new rods brand new pistons brand new bearings we're gonna have a brand new oil pump we're gonna have a brand new everything um here is our crank i have another d15 crank in case this one is no good but like this crank looks really good as well and um yeah i don't know it has some markings on it the engine itself looks like the engine's been put together for a long time i really don't think this engine's ever been taken apart to tell you guys the truth i think this is just an all original oem engine but the writing on the crank did kind of throw me off um let me know if you guys think that's OEM or not, or if this engine has been taken apart before. But overall, it's in like really, 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 really good condition.
Um, Isa came by last night and um, we got a lot of measurements done on the block with his bore gauge. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's called a bore gauge. Basically, it measures the bore, <laughs> right? Um, and you have to do this to basically figure out like if your cylinders are going to need honing or not. It's not like a true, true, true way of knowing, but it definitely will give you a rough idea of what your cylinders look like. There's a plane. Give me a second. But we're going to get into this right now. Just give me a second here. Um, I'm removing the last of the OEM bearings. These are the main bearings that were on the girdle. And um, they, for the most part, look pretty damn good. Like, very clean, no scratching or nothing. Like, bearings look fantastic, honestly. Um, this is what the girdle looks like without the bearings in it. Um, all of this is, like, very, very normal because... Um, as long as you can run your finger through it, your fingernail, and you don't feel like any pits or anything, then you're you're good to go. You're good to send it. Um, if you really wanted, you could like polish these out, but like it's not recommended because you know this is already round. We already know it's round. We have no reason to suspect that we had anything wrong with these bearings. So all we're gonna do is clearance the new bearings and then um, send it. Over here on the actual block, we're looking at the top halves of our main bearings, and um, yeah. The actual block looks great, and the bearings that I removed also looked great. Um, the only area that you also have to check is right here in between cylinders 2 and 3. Um, the This is where your thrust wa washers go. So, like, yeah, that area is probably going to be pretty scored up on any block that you guys are working on. At least in my experience, all of the blocks I've torn down, they all kind of pretty much look like this. Um, again, as long as it's a completely flat surface, no, like, pitting or scratches or anything... All of this is pretty much good to go. Um, what the thrust washers do is they lock your crank in place so that way the crank doesn't move left and right. Um, especially when you are running a very high pressure clutch, you're putting a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure on pushing the crankshaft into the block. And that's what the thrust washers are responsible for. They just lock everything in place and keep it from moving. Okay, so moving on to looking at the cylinders, I have mine pretty much all cleaned up. There's pretty much no oil or debris or anything in there. That's as clean as they're gonna get and they're looking gorgeous. Um, for the most part, if you don't have any like pretty gnarly scratches, like up and down scratches, or just anything that your fingernail will get caught on, for the most part, your cylinders are probably Gucci. This is, um, this is a budget build and for the most part the general like idea of a budget build is no machine work because as soon as you put machine work into your block you're already like two three hundred maybe even four hundred bucks into your freaking single cam block and that's not even including rods pistons any parts nothing that's just your block so we're trying to avoid doing that we're trying to avoid any machine work so what we did was we took isa's bore gauge and we measured out what the actual cylinder walls look like so this is the back of the block. The block is backwards. So that means that this is cylinder one and this is cylinder four. But this is cylinder one and this is cylinder four. If you look at these here numbers right here, um, we have this left and right column. And that basically is the measurement of between, you know, these two walls on the cylinders. We did the top, the middle, and the very, very, very bottom. And these are the numbers we got. Basically, you set the bore gauge to whatever bore you're measuring. So the, this is a 75 millimeter bore. So we set the bore gauge to zero out as 75 millimeters. That means that all of these numbers are how much um, we are away from that being 75 millimeters. So minus 0 0.004 basically means that we are minus 0 0.043 of an inch from being a true 75 millimeter bore. So that actually would mean that these walls are a little closer together than being at 75 millimeters. And if you look over here at the second column, that is our up and down clearance, front and back. And we are 0 0.0006 um, above 75 millimeter. So we can tell that the top of our cylinder wall kind of, um, it shrunk and then it stretched. So it's kind of an oval shape, not an extreme oval, obviously 0 0.0006 of an inch is very, 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 very minimal. And as you can see, our numbers started bigger 
and progressively got smaller as we got lower into the cylinder. And since these are negative numbers, that means that our cylinder is actually tapering. That means it's getting bigger down here. It's almost a true 75 millimeter all the way at the bottom. And we get all the way up here and we're losing 0 0.004 of an inch. So that means we're tapering. We're getting a little bit narrower as we get higher. Um, same can be said for our up and down clearance on, on um, cylinder one. We start off at 0 0.0006 above 75 millimeters. So that basically means that the top of the cylinder is it's a little bit thinner than it is down there. And it's super, super normal because look at all of these zeros. Very, 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 very minimal. So um, we're a little bit thinner up here. And then as we go down the cylinder wall, uh, obviously just like down here, we go back to being very close to that stock 75 millimeter bore. I'm not very good at explaining technical things like math things and stuff like that. That's why I have ESA. So I know I, know I probably butchered that explanation, but um, yeah, you guys saw us with the bore gauge and that is pretty much how you do a shade tree cylinder measurement. Um, again, another thing that you guys need to um, take into account is that these numbers are not nothing to be like startled over. So yeah, our cylinders are a little tapered, but but when a block goes into the machine shop to get bored, um, there's actually a plate that is bolted to the top of it. All of the um, head bolts are used to bolt that plate down. And um, if you think about all of the torque that your head is sandwiching your head gasket down on, it's a lot of torque and it is a lot of pressure. It's an extremely large amount of pressure. You've got like, you've got some major clamping force going on here. And this is an aluminum block. What we know about aluminum is that aluminum is soft metal. So therefore that aluminum is going to contort. It's going to change shape. So when you actually bolt a head down, the cylinder walls do change shape a little bit. And when you unbolt that head, when you relieve all of that tension, the cylinder walls are going to oval out a tiny bit. It's very, very minor. But as soon as you go and clamp, and as soon as you put that clamping force back down on top of the block, the cylinders round back out. And that's pretty much the way they are when you're running. Like we all know, an engine goes through some crazy ass heat cycles. A cold engine is a much different engine than a hot engine. And this is all just stuff that we generally need to take into account when we're building an engine. So that being said, I'm okay with these numbers. I'm happy with these numbers. And I think these numbers are good enough for us to proceed. Um, we're now going to have to clean up the cylinders because when you get your block back from the machine shop and it's freshly um, bored, you're going to get a really, really nice hone. It's gonna be very cross hatched and it's just gonna look clean and brand new. If we're not doing machine work, we can do a DIY hone ourselves at home. For about 40 bucks, you can get yourselves one of these here flex hones. This is a 76 millimeter flex hone. This is what was recommended for use on a 75 millimeter block. I guess you basically want the flex hone to be a little bit bigger. This is the 220 grit. So it's not going to be very, very abrasive. There was a 180 grit option. Um, I didn't get that one because I really am not trying to remove material. All I'm trying to do is clean up this block and give myself some very uniform sleeves to work with. You know what I mean? So we read the directions here. It can be used on a variety of rotating spindles from CNC equipment to a portable hand drill. Um, recommended RPM range is 600 to 1000 RPM. All right, bet. My drill says that it operates between zero and 1350 RPM. Um, the flex hone recommends use between 600 and 1000 RPM. So um, we're not going to do... We're gonna keep it max at half trigger. Yeah, okay. Just to play it safe, we're gonna keep it max at half trigger. The other thing that you need is something to lubricate with. This is just a little oil squirter. It just shoots oil out. I found it in, <laughs> I found it in my uncle's um, garage when he died. So now we have this cool little oil thingy and we're gonna be using that. Um, you want to have your cylinders very, very, very well lubricated. And I believe you want to lubricate the flex hone as well. The, the tool should be well coated with lubricant, either 1030 weight or flex hone oil. This is 1030 weight. I just put that in the Yonke the other day. So um, let's get the tool completely lubricated in oil and then let's get to honing. I pretty much have like all of the little balls covered in oil. Um, they were pretty dry coming out of the package. So um, yeah. I made sure to get her completely oiled up. We also have some oil on the cylinder walls. 
So we should be Gucci. I'm a little nervous here, but we should be Gucci. Um, the tool should be at full operating speed but before it enters the cylinders, okay? So without further ado, let's see what we can do. Okay. <laughs> That's how we're looking after our first hone. Oh damn, baby. Okay. After we honed it, now we can see some stuff that we couldn't see before, right? Oh wow. Let's proceed. Now I'm gonna lubricate cylinder two. Get it all covered in oil. I also re-oiled the tool on the gun. So we should be good. I'm just going to do all of them. And cylinder four. Okay, so step one, really cleaned out the cylinders, right? Wow, those things are shiny and they're looking good. We do have, you know, some of these up and down scratches. This one is a little bit, but for the most part, I can't feel any of them. Okay. Um, yeah, there might be one or two I can feel, but for the most part, all these tiny ones. They're really just tiny ones. Okay, that's looking good. Um, if we read the back of the box, it says the honing time should be approximately 20 to 45 seconds per cylinder. But go up to step five, it says, every few strokes, wipe a portion of the surface clean and inspect the surface. That's what we did. We only did a couple of strokes and now we're inspecting the surface. Um, proceed with further honing if necessary. Final stroking may be accelerated to develop a 45 degree crosshatch angle. So the, the stroke is going up and down, right? So let's get the tool back in there. Let's hone these cylinders some more, but um, this time let's give it a little bit more of a stroke and we should develop the 45 degree crosshatch that we want. Filling up my brand new oil pan with oil. <laughs> cylinder should we hone it again I don't know let's just do all of them
Okay, okay, cool. Um, that was my first time honing a block with a ball hone. Um, the cylinders are looking really good. Um, everything's looking very clean and we are, look at that cross hatch, dude. Like, wow, that cross hatch is pretty present. I'm pretty happy with that cross hatch. We're gonna call it here. No more honing now. Um, we're done. This looks good. This looks clean. We do have a couple of scratches that we didn't see underneath all of the, you know, residue. But um, the scratches are minor. There's one scratch that's a little deep, and um, we probably could clear it if we did a 75.5 millimeter bore. But I already have my pistons. I already have my rods, and um, we are already ready to start dry assembling this block so we're gonna proceed because if she smokes a little bit she smokes a little bit i'm not tripping think about this build as practice for the actual builds we're going to be doing um i'm pretty much planning on doing some fully fully built dual overhead cam zcs i'm thinking about cssing both of my blocks and um you know once we start messing around with big boy money and rare engines not just some d15 then that's when i'm gonna really 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 want to be sure that i know what i'm doing and we got this 100 percent so um this is just a practice engine you know we're gonna be running it obviously but like it's just a practice engine don't don't stress too much about what about it well anyways what are we gonna be running for internals sheesh boy we got some nip and racing pistons right here we got some npr um piston rings and then in this box, oh my lordy, what did they send us? Uh, my address is right here, so, oops. Oh, sheesh, boy. We got some max speeding rod connecting rods. Oh, man. All right, so I already opened one because I wanted to actually, like, test fit it and make sure it was the rod that we needed. And um, sure enough, these are the rods that we need. These are max speeding rods connecting rods. Um... I'm working on getting like a little weed scale or something so that way we can measure the rods out and like weigh them. Um, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on these max speeding rods and for the most part they come very very well balanced but um, I just wanted to do it for the sake of the video you know but um, it's all good we didn't get one <laughs> but these are the max speeding rod connecting rods. I'm going to have a link to these in the description to this video if you guys would like to pick those up. Currently this is probably the only D15 rod on the market. So like, if you look at this block here, it says we got a JDM D15B, right? But we got an oil dipstick right here in the middle, just like an EF engine, you know? And um, if you guys are familiar with D15Bs, then you're gonna know that that is a general term. It's basically an umbrella term that means like four or five different engines. There is literally a D-stroked D17, which is only compatible with 01 to 05 Civics, and that is also called a D15B, even though it's an entirely different block. So there's multiple different D15Bs. The one we have in front of us, as you can see, is a non-VTEC 88 to 91 spec D15 B1 B2 replacement engine. All that stuff really refers to as bearing size. Um, the different D15s are gonna have different bearing sizes. There is literally um, this engine, which is a D15 B1 B2 replacement. There is the JDM VTEC D15B, which comes with a D16 Z6 head on it. And then there's the OBD2 D15s, which are basically D-stroked Y8 blocks. It's pretty complicated. There's a lot to it, but um, this is just an intro to it. What I basically told Dylan to do, because Dylan is also building a D15B, is I said disassemble it, take it apart, and then compare the stock internals to other internals and try to figure out exactly what internals are in your D15B. So for the 88 to 91 D15B1, B2 blocks, even the D15B7 blocks, um, you're going to look on the internet and you're not going to find any connecting rods. Luckily for us, though, Max Feeding Rods makes not only the D16A connecting rods, the connecting rods which would be good for um, a D16A6 or a D16Z6 build, not only do they make those connecting rods, they also make JD or they also make D15B1, B2, B7 connecting rods. So if you have one of these little base model D15s, um, because of Max Feeding Rods, you can now build that. <laughs> Hell yeah. And then over here in this box, we have our Nippin Racing single overhead cam D15B pistons. These are PM3 pistons, essentially. These are the only pistons that were available for this engine, and they are the exact same pistons that came out of it, except for these are full floating pistons. If you guys don't know what floating pistons are, it is, it's essentially the difference between stock 
and aftermarket pistons. Floating pistons, for um, science that I do not truly understand at the moment, are going to be a much, much superior piston design for when we're actually putting on power. Um, as you can see, these pistons have wrist pins that I can easily push out with my finger. I'm not gonna completely take it out, but this OEM piston, as you can see, that wrist pin is not coming out, but if I push it out the other way, oh, wow, it just popped out, hell yeah. These are press fit pistons. So we have, a, we have press fit wrist pins, and then we have floating wrist pins. Um, floating wrist pins use these little guys. These are just two little, these are just little C-clips. You put one of these C-clips on each side of the piston and it locks that wrist pin in there and the wrist pin is essentially floating. Whereas on this one, on the OEM style pistons, you press these wrist pins in and they pretty much do not come out after that. There is a reason why floating is going to hold more power, but for the most part, the reason why we're doing a floating setup is because, um, Unless you're running stock rods, you're running floating pistons. And we are not running stock rods, so we are running floating pistons. <laughs> oh my lordy. This is awesome, dude. This is so cool. I'm excited now. I put one of them together just to mess around and put it together. And like, wow, this is beefy. This is going to be the biggest connecting rod piston setup I've ever ran in an engine. Oh, I'm excited. I'm super excited. Okay, guys. So um, I kind of just wanted to show you guys the max speeding rods, um, connecting rods, and the pistons that we are going to be running and kind of just get the ball moving on this. We now have a block that is fully prepped and it is ready for dry assembly. Next video on the engine, we're going to be doing some dry assembly stuff. I have um, Plasti Gauge right here. So let me know in the comments if any of you guys even know what Plasti Gauge is. This is what we're going to be using next. Um, I went over to AutoZone trying to pick some of that up and they all looked at me like, what the hell? <laughs> but O'Reilly's came through and we got some Plasti Gauge. So um, the next step we're going to be taking with this block is we're going to put together our pistons and rods. We're going to press our rings in here. We're going to check our ring clearances. Um, we're going to do ring gap and all of that stuff. And then we're going to flip this block upside down and we're going to start matching up our bearings. For bearings, I just have some standard size king bearings for both the main bearings and the connecting rod bearings. Hopefully those bearings are good. Hopefully we can use those bearings and we'll be Gucci to go. That's what we have the plastic gauge for. It's to check all of that stuff. If not, then, you know, we're just going to have to order another set of bearings and go from there. But this is my first like real engine build. I've done rebuilds. I've taken apart engines, replaced bearings, done piston rings and stuff like that. But I've never actually done something like this, like actual, you know, custom pistons and stuff. I mean, these aren't custom pistons, but like actual floating pistons, actually using aftermarket stuff meant for power. So that's really freaking cool. Um, I haven't really opened the piston rings. They're all in the box right here. We have two sets of piston rings just in case, you know, we screw up one of those piston rings. We might even practice gapping rings on the other set of piston rings just because they're a cheaper set. But yeah, guys, like I said, um, we're pretty much ready to go. We're pretty much ready to start dry assembly. If any of you guys have any engine building tips and tricks and whatever you guys want me to be aware of, please hit the comment section right now and let me know. One of the reasons this video is like cutting off right here is because, well, one, Josh is coming to kick it. We're going to like binge watch the whole entire Avatar series. But um, no, besides that, I kind of just want to be able to get a bunch of feedback from you guys. A lot of you guys are like a lot more experienced than me and have done a lot more things than I've done. And um, it would just be really cool to make sure I get all of that feedback from you guys. So that way I don't have y'all being like, Nate, you should have done this. You should have done that. You know what I mean? And yeah, we're going VTech, baby. If you don't remember, we're going VTech. So if you're excited for any of the stuff to come, if you're excited for um, the engine that we are building for Casera or all of the body work we've been getting done, Johnny Emerson helped me get that quarter panel solid. So there is no longer a wedding cake glob size of Bondo underneath that primer. None of that anymore. It's pretty, pretty solid. It's pretty, pretty much just all metal at this point. Now we got oil all over the freaking car. <laughs> but yeah, if you're excited for any of the progress, guys, or if you want to pick yourselves up some max speeding rods, connecting rods, then definitely 
open the description. I'm going to have um, my discount code as well as a direct link to the rods that we are using in the description of this video. If you're building a D15B1, B2, B7, pick up some of these rods. Um, I'll also throw in a link to the Flex Hone. I got this off of Amazon. It was like 40 bucks. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much everything that we did in this video. Um, I would give you a link to like Issa's bore gauge and all of that, but I really don't know how that kind of stuff works. <laughs> so anyways, y'all, I'll see you next time. Like and subscribe and um, maybe start your own engine build. Let's go.